हाय एवरीवन अ वेरी वॉम गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू मी कमलजीत कौर सोनी वंस अगेन आई एम हियर टू एनहेंस योर स्किल सेट इन टर्म्स ऑफ एंटी मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग सो बिफोर आई बिगिन द टुडेज टॉपिक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक्स टू ईच वन ऑफ यू हु हैव लाइक माय प्रीवियस वीडियोस एंड योर एप्रिसिएशन इज एब्सोल्युटली अ मोटिवेशन फॉर मी टू वर्क बेटर टू वर्क मोर so thank you so very much for liking my previous videos i hope you may find this one is as useful as the previous ones the topic for today is very very important topic when we talk about anti money laundering whether you prepare for exams like camps or any other aml related certification it is very very important for us to understand how banks and financial institutes have been misused when it comes to money laundering i am going to discuss the role of correspondent banking today a concept which is slightly technical however a very very misused when it comes to money laundering so first let's understand what is correspondent banking why do we have it what are the good features about correspondent banking and then we will discuss how correspondent banking can be misused by money launderers a bank is is a word which means trust worldwide people trust the institute called bank and that is why we rely with banks when it comes to our money our precious uh, things which we we use in safety deposit boxes and so on and bank provide lot of product and services in order to support the customer better one of the product or service which bank offer is called correspondent banking or supporting the customer in different jurisdiction in different currency so let me give you a quick example what it is let's say a customer is based out of india wants to do some transaction in usa in us dollar in that case they need support of bank to have this transaction in some other currency so each time we talk about wire transfers foreign exchange transactions or trade finance product the correspondent banking this particular relationship between two bank proves really useful so correspondent banking is basically a relationship between two banks which may be in different jurisdiction for example so let's say in india we have state bank of india sbi and then we have another bank called bank of america this is based out of united states of america and state bank of india is based out of india now these two banks when they have any relationship with each other it is called correspondent banking so let's understand this relationship a bit better so there is a customer mr a he is based out of india he has to make some payment to a person based out of usa let's say any business relationship mr a and mr b in us has a has to make a payment to b in us dollar the sbi will have a relationship with bank of america the this bank is called respondent bank and the bank of us is called the correspondent bank so the bank which needs services from other bank this bank is called respondent bank and this bank is called correspondent bank the sbi will have account with bank of america in usa in which currency the us dollar so for bank of america it's an account in their home currency however the account for sbi is in a foreign currency the account which sbi has with the bank of america is called nostro account nostro 
and vostro. These are Latin words. Nostro means ours. Vostro means yours. So SBI has an account with Bank of America in US dollar. For SBI, this account is called Nostro. The same account for BOA is Vostro. So one account which is known as Nostro for one is known as Vostro for another. So for SBI, our account is with you. And who is you? Bank of America. So for Bank of America, it says your account is with us. Vostro and for SPI it is Nostro. So these are two concepts Nostro and Vostro. I hope we are clear about it now. A wants a relationship in or a transaction to be happening in US. SBI will have an account with Bank of America. SBI is a respondent bank. BO is a correspondent bank. This transaction will be passed through in USA and Mr. B will get paid in which currency? US dollar. This is how two banks support each other with the transaction called correspondent banking. Now when we talk about this, another word which you may come across is called intermediary bank or sometime beneficiary bank. It's not always necessary that correspondent bank is also a beneficiary account. So let me take this example forward. Let's say in USA, there is one more account called Citibank. The Mr. B does not have account with BOA. The Mr. B has account with Citibank. In this case, the SBI will tra do transaction with Bank of America because these two have relationship with each other. BOA will receive the fund from SBI and will transmit to Citibank. So respondent bank, correspondent bank and beneficiary bank. And then B will have a banking with Citi and then they will get paid via Citibank. So here three banks comes into picture. The respondent, the correspondent and beneficiary. Beneficiary bank may be same as correspondent bank. It may not be same. Entirely depend on the transaction and jurisdictions. Now as with brief example, we understood that, you know, two banks help each other via various uh, product and services, as I said, trade finance, wire transfer, foreign exchange, and it is a win-win. So SBI can support its Indian customer far better in other jurisdictions as well. It's a win-win for customer, the banks, everyone. So seems like a best product, which a customer can have it. But each time, you know, some good things comes, it comes with bad things as well. When money launderer looked at this transaction, they realized that they can misuse it in a very large way. Let's see how. Three or two jurisdiction came into picture. In this example, India and US. So one of the main element which we understand in money laundering is cross-border transaction. So cross-border came. Second, the transaction sometimes can become very layered and complicated. The more layers comes into picture, money laundering comes into picture. Because what is the core objective of money laundering? We discussed that in one of the class. The objective of money laundering is not profit making. The main objective of money laundering is to layer, layer the transaction. So this complexity gives a layer. Now, once we have understood what is correspondent banking and the terms related to it, let me explain how this concept can be misused when it comes to money laundering. Three bank came into picture, two jurisdictions came into picture. It can be more than two jurisdictions as well. So first, let's understand 
how bank of america will decide if they really want to have a relationship with sbi or not in a banking term when a customer goes to bank bank does due diligence due diligence in a simpler manner to understand the customer in and out what is the customer what do they do what is the source of income what is the source of wealth that is due diligence and and of course the bank ask for your kyc documents your identity proof your address proof to know what you do your income proof but how will that happen when two banks have a relationship with each other so now let's assume for bank of america sbi is a customer and a bo ha- boa should do the due diligence of sbi in a right manner because one of the weakest link in correspondent banking is if due diligence has not been done properly the first thing which boa would check is the reputation of india because sbi is indian bank why it is important for them to understand the reputation of india in terms of aml process because they are going to have a relationship with a country which is not their home country so first thing they would like to check how strong is the aml procedure is in india what is the reputation of central bank of india which is called reserve bank of india rbi if bo is convinced that india and rbi has a very strong reputation when it comes to strong aml kyc cft procedures boa is convinced up to an extent that yes we can have a relationship with this country then the second line of due diligence might include checking the validity of license of sbi since central bank of india would issue the license to bank boa would check if the license is still valid active or if there are any kind of actions taken against sbi when it comes to money laundering this is another deciding factor once they have checked that kind of regulation they will come to sbi so first the country the central bank and then the bank then boa will check the documents of sbi if they are convinced that everything is fine boa will say okay fine let's have a relationship with sbi but guys in this story it's not just about correspondent banking getting convinced about respondent if sbi does any correspondent banking transaction with a country or a bank which has a bad reputation it can impact the reputation of sbi as well so here even respondent bank will check what is the reputation of usa what is the reputation of bank of america it's a mutual relationship guys so it's not just one way around it is both ways both bank will get convinced if they find everything in place the relationship goes ahead and called correspondent banking now with this example you would have understood how important is for banks to understand the reputation when it comes to aml anti money laundering now let's understand how this relationship can be exploited by money launderer so let me give you an example how correspondent banking can be misused so now let's understand how this relationship can be misused so let's say this is state bank of india this is bank of america this is india this is usa both have checked each other they are convinced they have done the proper due diligence now there is a concept which is called downstreaming or nesting so let's understand what is nesting lot of time countries trust their neighborhood countries too much <clears throat> and they probably would not do the due diligence the way they should so for a moment let's assume there is 
a one neighborhood country called N. Let's say this country is a neighborhood country for India. And since uh, it's, a, it's a neighborhood country and probably we trust them too much or for a moment, let's assume that if SBI would not have a very strong AML procedures in hand, in that case, they may not do the due diligence of N country's bank the way they should have done. N want N is a is a bank based out of another country, a small neighborhood country. However, the country N has a very weak AML procedures. The problem with SBI that relied on the neighbor. However, the neighbor is either involved in any kind of money laundering or probably too negligent about their customers. No, not having strong AML process in hand. There is a customer called Mr. X. Mr. X lives in country N and has a relationship with bank N. This customer Mr. X wants a transaction happening in USA. But N doesn't have any relationship with USA. So they have taken help from their neighborhood country's bank, SBI. So the transaction from N goes to SBI. SBI relied on the neighbors and they relied on the, the concept that N would have checked their Mr. X thoroughly. Since it's a country's bank, it's a very large bank, the assumption was probably they, they would have checked their customer, Mr. X. The Mr. X transaction goes to SBI and from SBI, since they had a correspondent banking, the amount goes here. BOA does not do any check of Mr. X or N. Why not? Because they believed that since it is getting through respondent bank, everything will be fine. Correct? So basically, all banks relied on each other. SBI relied on N and, and BOA relied on SBI. But things went wrong. A customer, Mr. X, was actually involved in money laundering. So this transaction, which we just understood, is called nesting. Nesting is a concept where a bank nests on someone else or take help of someone else to do money laundering. So now we have understood how important is the correspondent banking relationship. Correspondent banking relationship is very, very crucial for, for a customer because they need support in different currencies. At the same time, the correspondent banking can be widely misused as well. With the example of nesting, we understood the importance of due diligence. If you look at the website of Financial Action Task Force, you'll realize that they are also talking about it. As to the weakest link in correspondent banking worldwide is not having proper due diligence. So it's a high time where banks should focus more on due diligence. It's not always important that we do a due diligence of customer well. It's equally important or even more important for a bank to do uh, you know, due diligence of each other. So this was a concept which is very important. And for examination like CAMS, this is a frequently tested concept. The technical terms like respondent, correspondent banking, uh, intermediary bank, Nostro, Vostro, these are frequently tested concept. My serious recommendation to each one of you is stick to the basic, whatever you have understood, please stick to it. No matter how the scenario based questions are being framed, even if question try to confuse you in 10,000 ways, stick to your concepts. This golden rule will always help you in all the exam that do not overanalyze. The read the question, read all option and reread the question. Sometimes we misinterpret the question. 
So very, very important that we reread the question to make sure that you have understood the question well. With this, I would say thank you so much for having me once again. And before we part, please promise to like and subscribe. For me, the motivation is your love and appreciation. So if you like it, please like, please subscribe. And if you have any feedback, I'm really happy to listen to your feedback in the comment section. So with this, thank you so very much. I'll be back with one more topic for you. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much. Thank you.